In this lesson, we'll learn how to create and use vector masks inside of Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So this is the Lesson 16 Begin file. It's very similar to the file we worked with in the previous lesson when we learned about paint masks. So um, vector masks actually work very similar to paint masks. We actually store them in the layer manager here in the exact same area. Now, as far as masks are concerned, Sketchbook Designer could care less if we use vectors to create a mask or if we use pixels to create a mask. So um, we're going to create it the exact same way, only we're going to come over when we click on the word mask here. Instead of dragging up to paint mask, we're simply going to drag over to new vector mask. So uh, when we do that in this case, it gives us mask vector one if we want to rename that. Same as the layers below, all we need to do is double click on that layer name. I'll go ahead and leave it as it is right now. And you can see by default, um, when we create this vector mask, it's currently enabled because we have the check mark next to it. Uh, so why don't we see anything masked off here? There's no masking occurring, even though this mask is enabled. Well, that's because we have to come in and we have to draw vectors in this area. So um, thinking about maybe areas we want to mask off. Now, when it comes to vectors, as far as a mask is concerned, there's really only two different components to a vector shape that can mask out data. So we have our stroke, which we've learned down here, we can actually control that. And it depends also on the brush that we currently have selected. So let me go ahead and let's just grab the pen here. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to curve point mode. So like, so we can actually draw really nice curves. So uh, we'll just draw a stroke kind of along the center of this gray area here. Go ahead and put one there, there, and let's go ahead and just draw one here, and we'll draw one here. So we've kind of got this nice curve that kind of splits this area right down the middle, something like that. And then we'll go ahead and hit OK, and maybe we want to draw another one here. We'll go ahead and start one here, and go ahead and intersect right there. So we've got these two curves drawn, and if we hit OK on that, uh, you can see here that basically there's a red stroke being applied to both of these two curves. Let me come over here and just deselect, or I'll switch over to my Select Curve tool by hitting the V key on my keyboard, and you can see there's a red stroke applied to these. Well, my color selection was black, so essentially what's going to happen at this point is the stroke itself that's applied to these curves is going to mask out any data that we decide to apply. So uh, let's come down here and maybe just create a new paint layer, and we'll demonstrate. And I'll just use a simple airbrush here, and we'll shrink that down. Make it a little more intense. And we'll even hide the mask just so we can see this effect occurring. So um, you can see that stroke that is applied to those two curves is being used to mask out this paint that we're applying here. So um, basically, this is a, an example of using a stroke to mask out pixel data. So I'm going to undo that because I don't like that. That was a really quick sloppy. Uh, paint job there. So let me come back up here and select my vector mask and let's decide to mask something else out. But the other component to vector artwork that you can use to mask information out here inside of Sketchbook Designer is a fill. Now we haven't talked much about fills yet. We're going to get into that here in just a couple of lessons. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just sort of give you the abbreviated version if you will. And let's do this. We'll just come over here and I'm just going to draw a circle. We'll just kind of zoom in down here. And let's say we want this circle to be... Come in and show my mask so we can see what we're doing here. There we go. So I'm drawing a circle and there we go. And you can see the stroke is creating a mask. We'll draw kind of some receding circles right here. Receding in size. Okay, that's good. So what happens now if we come up and actually turn this stroke off? Let me select these vectors. And over here in my attribute editor, we'll just come over and uncheck that show stroke. Well, those vectors are still there, but there's no component to them that can mask out 
the information that we're wanting to mask out. So uh, what we can do though is come over and grab our solid fill bucket. So uh, black is still my color so I'm gonna come over here and I know it's kinda hard to see those you're actually getting a faint orange outline when I mouse over them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there and I'll go ahead and click there click there and let's see if I can get this last one. It was a small one. There we go. So basically what has happened there is I've applied a fill to these closed shapes. Each of these circles has now a black fill. And remember in a mask black is going to hide information. So now if we come down here to that new paint layer that we created go ahead and hide the mask so we can see what we're painting. We can come in here and you actually get a preview inside the brush tip of where that paint's going to be applied. So maybe we want to come in and do a stroke sort of like that. And you can see those vector shapes are masking out the paint that we apply to this layer and it's because of the fill attribute or the fill component of those vectors that we're able to mask out this information. Alright, great. So let's undo that and jump back up here and I'm going to quickly just select these. Let's make sure our mask is turned on. There we go. And I'm going to delete these. Just like so. All right, fantastic. So um, basically we've looked at how we can use a stroke and a fill on a vector curve to create mask information here inside of Sketchbook Designer. Now um, we can also, just like with pixels, we can actually take previously created data and use it as a mask. So um, let me go ahead and show you this orange areas here. I've come in and I've created basically these black shapes that represent these orange areas in the shoe. Now this was really easy to do. All I needed to do was duplicate this layer and delete all the vectors that I did not need except for the ones that made up those two shapes. So uh, basically this is what I ended up with. Now again keeping in mind that these two shapes are black in color so they're going to hide information. But again we can just simply drag this up into our mask area and notice it's created a new mask here. Now we still have that layer that I had the vector information on but we now have this new mask. Let me come in and hide that and you can see those red areas that are created because of the black fill that's assigned to these shapes. So I won't demonstrate this mask but if we really wanted to we could come over here and hide this and come in and begin to paint another color and the areas that are orange, this area here and this area here, would not receive that paint. Alright, great. Now remember we learned a few lessons back how we could create our own custom brushes here inside of Sketchbook Designer. And we actually created one. Let me go ahead and click and I'll delete this mask. But before I do, let me just go ahead and show you here that in the layer attributes here we actually can adjust the opacity of the mask which is basically like reducing that closer to white. So um, we'll just go ahead and hide that for right now. And let's go ahead and delete that. There we go. So we've got our base here and I'm going to come in on this new mask layer. Make sure it's revealed here. And we're not going to need these two curves. But we'll go ahead and leave them there just for the time being. So let's focus on kind of these darker areas right here. And uh, I'm going to come over here and let's simply grab maybe a pen. And remember that custom brush we created and stored in my assets, this one right here? We'll go ahead and use that one here. And I'm going to come in on my vector mask and I'm going to paint with this brush. Now you can see I'm painting a circle so that's not what we want. Let's go ahead and switch back over to something like maybe curve stroke mode here. And I'm going to actually hold B on my keyboard to shrink that down. Now remember this is a custom brush that's being applied along a custom vector curve that we draw. So what I can do is I can come in and I can draw a vector curve here sort of like that. And maybe we want to draw another one sort of like that. Draw another one here. I'm doing this relatively quickly. So, but now what we can do is we can come over and we can select our curves and we can kind of start to straighten these up. Now this is sort of a polka dot pattern and I want these to kind of fit seamlessly together here. So we can come in, adjust our curves, add more control points if we need to. Come in here just like so. Might add a control point there. 
All right, that's good enough. But um, you can see what's happening now inside our mask is that this custom brush that's being applied along these curves is being used as mask data. So at this point, if we wanted, we could come over to that custom, or rather that new paint layer that we created, and maybe we wanted to do some highlights. So it appears that maybe there's these holes in this area, some kind of a mesh, a breathable mesh for this shoe. So um, let's come in here, hide our mask, and we'll just change our color here to um, something kind of highlight colored. Maybe something like that. That looks pretty good. And I'll just ramp the intensity down a little bit as well. And I'll zoom out. All right, so I'll just come in here and begin to brush this in. And now you can see how that custom brush is able to be used as mask data here. So um, now it looks like we've kind of got this mesh pattern in this area of the shoe. And it's all because of that vector mask that we created quick and easy. So um, when it comes to masks here inside of Sketchbook Designer, um, it sees them, remember, it sees them as stencils. And it doesn't matter whether it's a vector or a paint mask. Um, it can either one be used as mask data to prevent you from painting on certain areas of your canvas. All right, great. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to dissect Sketchbook Designer's Color Editor.